is nothing that can clarify or elucidate or give more meaning to existence than meditation. So we're about to take a descent into language. Descent doesn't mean bad. It just means that we're flowing down into the field of constriction and limitation. We're so expanded in meditation. Either we dissolve or we ascend or we descend into a limitless feeling. Whereas once we start to cognize and verbalize, we move in the opposite direction. Both are full. That is full, and this is full. There are two different kinds of fullnesses. have just one fullness, say the fullness of meditation, the subjective dimension has been expanded into consciousness. That is felt as a greatness of fullness. The other fullness is the unbearableness of change, the power of it, the shakti, which is feeling that which wants to expand itself in the field of love. So the first fullness results in detachment, subsiding into the inner witness, the indweller, the Atman, pure consciousness, the self, and the other is enjoying the play of relativity. Does that make sense? So if there are two fullnesses, what is sorrow? If there were these two superlatives that are just existing next to each other, parallel to each other, the fullness of silence and the fullness of action, then what is sorrow? Sorrow is that imaginary concept of the me that sees both of those things. All you have is that silence and the fullness of change. Both are limitless and they go on forever.
When I'm talking, don't lose connection with your inner truth. Don't get taken away somewhere by my words, unless you really feel you want to. And truth resides within, not in anything I say. Life can become problematic when there's too much meditation or there's too much action. Either one can bring a host of problems. When one becomes attached to detachment in meditation, problems arise. When one becomes attached to action and change, problems arise. So there's a kind of free-flowing beauty that exists that unites these two. I'm not too sure what to call it. I don't want to use the word God because that word has been trampled upon for ages. We don't want to resurrect those old cliches. There may be something bigger than God. See, I'm not a reductionist, I'm an expansionist. Something bigger than what we conceive of to be the most. Conception is just measurement. <laughs>